The head fire is the fastest moving part of the fire. The temperatures can be over a thousand degrees Celsius. The flames might be 40 metres high. Even after the flames have gone, you can't survive in the head fire zone for maybe an hour after it's passed. It's an enormously dangerous place. It's like walking into hell. From their research into wildfire behaviour, the Project Vesta scientific team coined the term the dead man zone. We simply said, look, the area that a fire can travel in five minutes if the wind changes and turns a flank fire into a head fire is an extraordinarily dangerous area. The thing that can always change in a fire is the wind direction. The firefighter has to be expecting that the fire behaviour can suddenly change if the wind switches to right angles to the direction it's blowing and change the flank fire into a head fire within a few minutes. When a fire moves away from a line, it moves away at a maximum rate of spread instantaneously from a few metres per minute to literally hundreds of metres per minute. Victoria's 1998 Linton fire had been contained after burning under a nor-nor-westerly wind and a fire danger rating of high. On the eastern flank, control lines were approaching each other as a strong southwesterly wind change arrived, gusting over 60 kilometres per hour. Two crews were in the remaining unburnt forest, some 70 metres from the fire edge. The uncontrolled section of flank fire suddenly became a head fire. A wall of flame engulfed the firefighters in less than two and a half minutes. Five firefighters died. When the cold change came through, the first thing that happened is this fire turned from flames a couple of centimetres deep, 30 centimetres high, to a metre of flame 40 metres deep, just spreading across the tops of the litter. And then as the convection built up, the flames went into the tops of the trees and you had flame heights in excess of 20 metres. These shifts really can occur without warning and that's what firefighters must prepare for. When this wind change occurs, you have to drop what you're doing and go immediately to a safe area. It's been a long-standing practice that people attacking a wildfire in the forest go to an anchor point, which is a safe point at the rear of the fire, and then work systematically up along the flanks of the fire. If we progressively control the edge of the fire, we've always got a safe place to fall back to, onto the burnt-out area. You have to be watching the fire all the time. If there is any change, and the most usual change is the smoke starts coming towards you, and that's an indication that the conditions have changed, I'm out of here. If you don't react immediately, you could be in big trouble. Under a light westerly wind and a fire danger rating of very high, the 1998 Johnson's Creek fire in the New South Wales Wingelow State Forest had burnt out some five hectares. Fire crews were backburning to the south of the fire when the wind switched to the north and the fire behaviour intensified. The fire is estimated to have taken less than two minutes to cover 100 metres of unburnt country and overrun the fire crews as they attempted to evacuate up a slope of 15 degrees. One firefighter was killed and seven were injured. On the Johnson's Creek fire, the fire was small, but the fire was below them. When the wind change occurred, not only did you get the immediate development of the fire after the wind change, but you also had it running up uh, a slope that was between 15 and 20 degrees. This combination of wind change and slope really does make a deadly combination. A fire danger rating of extreme and nor-nor-westerly winds had carried the New South Wales Grays Point fire all day. At around 3 p.m., crews were on a hill to the east of the flank fire, when the wind changed some 20 degrees to a nor'westerly. Before the wind change, the flank fire had been burning slowly downslope. This may have deceived the firefighters on the opposite slope about its potential rate of spread. Now, with the wind change, the head fire crossed the creek and rapidly accelerated up the hill, trapping the firefighters in barely more than a minute. Three firefighters died and six were seriously burnt. 
as soon as it crosses a creek line uh, and goes onto the upslope with the wind behind it, the change of spread might be 40 or 50 times. The firefighter really has to work as close to the fire edge as he possibly can. As soon as he moves off the flank, he's in the dead man zone. That's a very dangerous position to be in. Under very high fire danger conditions, on level ground, a fire running at its potential rate of spread will cover 150 metres in five minutes. If the firefighters are working on a 20 degree slope and the fire is below them, that fire can cover 600 metres in five minutes. That's over half a kilometre. The extreme here we have on level ground, a fire will cover 250 metres in five minutes. Again, if the slope is 10 degrees, that rate of spread doubles. If we go on a 20 degree slope, it doubles again and we're up to 1,000 metres. So that's a fire travelling one kilometre in five minutes. When you're in front of a fire and you know the head fire is running towards you, very often it's not clear which way you should go to get out of it. You can only see a few metres through the forest in many cases, and so unless you know where to go to a safe location, you could be caught so easily. <laughs>